Okay, welcome everybody. We're looking at creating a new subdivision from the Parcel Fabric workflows here. First, we're going to skip over our search area, and we're going to, the next step here is to create a plan. And you can see here, you can edit the attributes if you want. But we're going to go ahead and just create a generic plan here to get started. Okay, next, what we're going to do here is begin to create the outline of the subdivision. In this step, we're just creating the border around it. And I'm going to go ahead and input bearings and distances here in the dialog box. I've gone ahead and pre-populated these for the sake of time. Now for this section here, we're just going to connect these lines on the top, and we're just going to create the curves by inputting the radius after we uh, go ahead and snap these lines. So next over in the table here, we will enter the radius value for those. And we'll see once we enter that value that it will, the curve will take shape and match up with our subdivision boundary on our roadway here. And I'm pulling these from the survey plat. A lot of times the curves may be labeled in different areas or called out on a different sheet as in this case. And for this particular one, if we look and we take a closer look and zoom in we'll see the curve is actually uh, curved in the wrong direction so we're going to put a negative value in for the radius and that's going to take care of that for us okay now that we've got that let's take a look at our dialog box here and we can see that for this first line we're going to call it an origin line because that's what we had to go from our survey plat to get to our point of beginning Otherwise, the rest of them are all considered standard boundary lines. We'll go ahead and dock our table of contents box. And now what we're doing here is we're creating join links. And we're just going to create them here along the fabric, because that's uh, really the only place we have to join up with the fabric at this point. And you can see it's created a few of those join links. We're going to go ahead and perform the join here. And that's going to join our new subdivision boundary into the parcel fabric. And as we can see, that's created there with the default name of 1. And here's our attributes. That's what it's asking us to update our attributes. That's the next step in the workflow. And we're going to go ahead and proceed on to the next one. And now it's asking us to construct our lots. And I'm going to dock the dialog box again. Again, for the sake of time, I'm going to pre-populate these from our survey plat and enter the distance and bearings from there. Uh, but first, we're going to show the brake lines here. How you enter the brake lines, a pretty simple uh, procedure here where we right-click on the line we're interested in. We want to insert a brake line so we can add points along those lines, and those points we're later going to snap to uh, to create our lots. Put one more in here, and you'll see in a minute how we use those points to begin to put in our lots by snapping to them, and then we'll put in our distance and bearing over in our dialog box in order to create those. And you'll see once I create that, that it should turn blue on the far end of that. And we're going to go ahead and pre-populate this again for the sake of time. You can see we've entered the bearings and distances here. And at this point, we're now ready to move on and build these lots. We're going to build and keep current. And once we do that, we'll see these lots are created. And now what we're going to do is name them. And we have a naming tool in the parcel fabric here that we're going to use to quickly name these lots in consecutive order. We're going to make sure they're selected. We're just going to drag the line in the direction we want them to be named incrementally. And you can see that it automatically will update those names for us. I'm going to go ahead and save our edits here. And now we're going to um, go ahead and skip, proceed to the next step. And now we're going to update our attributes. In this case we don't have many so we're going to go ahead and move on. And the next one we have is to create tax parcels. And now we're going to name those tax parcels. It's actually going to require us to name those in order to move on to the next step. 
So again, we'll use our naming tool on those and we'll go in the direction of order chronologically. And again, this time we're just going to start at one and increment by one. And you can see it's gone ahead and named those tax parcels as well, which are directly over my lots at this point. We're going to uh, skip through the step of updating attributes on those tax parcels, but you could do that here if you needed to at this point in the process. And finally, uh, almost finished here. At this point, we're going to place annotation. We're just going to place that, and you can see it's gone ahead and put that on the map for us. And now we're going to update any annotation that's been maybe overlapping or misplaced. In this case, we're just going to update this particular annotation with this radius labeled. And we're just going to move that to a, a more aesthetically pleasing location. And at that point, that's our last step in the process. We're going to click Finish here. And we'll see once we uh, complete that step that we're going to have a new subdivision in the parcel fabric with subdivision boundary, with lots, and with overlaying tax parcels. Thanks for joining us today, and for more information, feel free to visit our website.